Hello, it's Sarah. And today I'm going to walk you guys through in real time. This is the first one I'm ever making. My stomach's growling. This is going to be a book cover, but I'm going to applique it and machine quilt it. I don't have a darning foot yet, but I'm going to just use basic stitches to uh, stitch the applique down with. But I want to show you the process that I used to get me this far. And I haven't cut out my letters yet. I'm going to cut out letters, <gasps> excuse me, that spell dream. So I'm just going to set this aside and we'll get back to that. But to, to start my project, the initial thing that I did was play around with some designs that I wanted to use. Uh, <clears throat> I wrote some words down that I like got some ideas like suns. I really love suns. And this one has bird houses and a, um, a bird and a tree. But I, I ended up with this one. The, this is very similar to a piece I just painted on um, a tote, a fabric tote. But I'm going to do it in applique. So this was the idea. Then from that, I went and I, I just cut, I have this, actually it's my granddaughter's. This is like that roll of paper that you get from um, their little uh, artist easels and you pull it down and anyway, you can use whatever you have, but I just happen to have it and so I cut it into the size, this is the exact size of one of these and this is what I'm talking about when I uh, say a book cover. This is a quilted, quilt as you go book cover that I did and I just covered um, a composition book with it. And it's 16 and a half by 10 and a half finished and then we're going to add a binding. So I'm going to cut my background, which I'm going to use blue. And so this whole, this piece of paper measures 10 and a half by 16 and a half. And then I kind of cut it down a little. I wanted to make it a little smaller, so I made it 15 by 9.5. I don't know how I came up with those measurements, but because I just wanted to squish my pattern in a little bit so that I'd have some leeway, I'd have some room to play. And then I just sketched out, again, a rough draft of the design in pencil. And I had to tweak my letters a couple times because... Um, I didn't like the way these were, they looked so tight together, and I do have that leeway, but anyway, so this was basically what I was going for. This was the idea. And then from there, I created templates to um, create the pattern. Now, the pattern is going to be in pieces because we're going to use, um, uh, it's called freezer paper and it's this. This is freezer paper that you just get at the grocery store and you're going to use this to create your, um, I guess it's the pattern, right? And I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take a piece, this is the freezer paper and it has a shiny side on one side and a, a matte side on the other side. So I just, this is just happens to be yellow but it's just uh, copy paper, photocopy paper, and I kind of like that I use this because I could tell the difference between my original design because it was on uh, the yellow paper. I could find it easier. I didn't get it confused with the um, the freezer paper. So let's just take the cloud because it's a, the simplest shape. And I basically just freehanded this again into a shape that I liked. I tweaked it. I kind of flattened it out a little bit and drew it onto my regular old uh, printer paper. And I'm going to use this shape for all my clouds. So all the clouds that are on here, this is the pattern that I'm going to use. I'm just going to move it around and put it in different places. So this is my pattern. Now, you take that and so I just, I cut out all the different pieces of my pattern. I cut them all out of that yellow paper. So I have the sun, I have the rays, and all I did was just took a circular, pe uh, circular piece. I just made them separate. I don't know why. 
but the rays are separate. And I'm not even going to use, I didn't end up using all of them, but I just wanted to have a variety of different shapes and sizes to use. Um, I did three different size hearts, so a small, medium, and large heart, and just cut them out. You just kind of loosely cut them out, like a shadow cut, because we're going to fussy cut them out when, once we get them onto the fabric. Um, a cloud and dream. Here's my letter. So it went from all small letters to some caps because I just didn't like the curviness of this letter. I think these are going to be hard enough as it is. The A, see curves are going to be more tricky when it comes to stitching. So that's the only reason I, tr I changed it out a little bit. And also I thought I could fit them better. So this is what I actually came up with for my letters. Um, some small cap uh, case and some um, capitals. So this is the pattern for that. Now, what we need to do is trace the design, and I'm just going to use the cloud for now. Actually, I have to do, did I do, I already did dream. It's around here somewhere. I'll have to find it because I'm going to switch out my camera. Oh, here it is. So I basically just took this, um, the, the matte side of the uh, freezer paper and lay it across. And, um, you could use a, um, a light box if you need it, but I actually switch it as I'm going. I, I change the shape a little bit too to make it fit better. But you basically just trace your main pattern and with a Sharpie, just draw it onto the matte side of the freezer paper. So you can see the shiny side, matte side. So now this is going to get, um, so I can just save all my patterns and I'm going to take this over to the ironing board and um, show you how I then adhere this to my fabric and all that. And we'll talk about fabric over at the ironing board. So I'm going to go away and I'll be right back. All right, so I'm going to talk about the fabric now, and I did a previous video that I went to Michael's, and all of these are fat quarters, and this is a weird angle, but I'm at my ironing board, and I just picked out batik fabrics, or uh, these are actually, it just says blue assorted, so they're kind of plain. They're not fussy patterns. There is a little bit of pattern on there, but they're not fussy. This is what I actually used for my palette for this, this quilt that I'm making. Um, see how the purple, it's kind of just modeled, right? It has modeling in it. This actually has like a chevron print. Um, and some of them are batiks. Like I think the orange is a batik. The red isn't. I don't think this is the batik one, but um, basically just pick out fabrics that are not going to be too busy because you're creating a design with the applique. So pick yourself out some colors that go with your design. And then this is called Steam Seam 2 Light. And I got this at um, Joann's. And it's only like around six bucks, but you only get five sheets, I think it is. Something like that in here. So what I did with it was I cut each sheet in half. So now I don't need to use like you can iron one of these onto your fabric and then you'll have that much more to use. But anyway, I cut each piece in half to create these pieces of fabric. Now each piece of fabric now has a piece of the seam, seam, seam on the back. And all that is is an adhesive. So when you pull the backing off, there's a stickiness back here. So it sticks and you can then stick it down to your background and we're going to do the same thing with the freezer paper to just create the template so that we're going to cut around. So I'll show you that. But see all these little pieces have the steam seam on the back. So I'm saving these. Like this is a little piece of red but it still has it on the back. This was the hearts that I cut out. Oops. So you can see the hearts that I cut out of there. This was a big piece. I did a big piece for the white because I had a lot of clouds. And I didn't even use these yet, but they just have a piece of steam seam on the back of them that I've already ironed on. This was the yellow that I cut all the rays out of, but I still have leftover fabric. So these are your scraps, and that's the sun. So to, do, to get your fabric 
all uh, steam is seamed, you use the wrong side and you just take a piece, this is half a piece of the steam is seam and I'm going to peel off the backing and just lay it onto my fabric on the wrong side and it's sticky. This is has like a stickiness to it. So it's stuck to my fingers and you just kind of stick it and I go as close to the edge of the fabric as I can because I just want to you know use it up. I don't want to waste it as much. See, it's stuck on there now. See, it's got the stickiness to it and then I've got um, some water in my iron because on the directions it does say uh, double-sided temporary stick on the back. It said steam iron or pre-wash to remove sizing, which I didn't pre-wash it, so I am going to, uh, I just added steam and it seems to be working pretty good, pretty well. So let's see. It's been sitting here a minute, but it seems pretty hot. And then I'm just ironing. I'm going to do both sides of the fabric actually. But you can kind of see it starts to get see-through. And that's stuck. So I'm just going to grab my scissors. I'm just going to cut this roughly. And save this for later. I don't think this was a batik. This was just, um, I'm not sure. It might have been. Anyway. Uh, I'm going to flip this over and just go over the front side as well. Just to make sure it's all good, right? And that's it. That's all you need to do to prepare your fabric for um, the next step. Which is to then take your freezer paper. And I, I kind of want to make this cool. Maybe I shouldn't have. Um, and you would position whatever you're going to do on there in a place that you like on the fabric, which this is all pretty, so I'm, I'm just going to go for it. And again, I'm going to try and save as much fabric as I can, so I'm sticking it um, along the bottom here. I can see through the paper, and but you know what? You want to make sure that you have this stuff. That's what you really want to make sure, because it's not all the way to the edge. So that looks good. And I'm just going to adhere this to that side of the fabric, to the pretty side of the fabric. And I don't know if pink lettering is the way to go, but in my mind, I just love pink and I think it's going to be super cute. So I'm going to go get actually the design. Now, you know what? I'm going to bring, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the, uh, my drawing board over there, it's, it's better, um, and because I, I think that's all I really need to do with the iron right now, so I'll be right back. Okay, back over at my desk, and now I have this piece of fabric that has the steam -a seam on the back with its stickiness on the back, and this is going to stick on here long enough for me to cut out the letters, so I'm just going to cut this away from the fabric. Um, well, these aren't the best scissors for this, I guess. I don't, I don't really want to use my fabric scissors, but I just want to get, so this pink, see then you can just pull your freezer paper off and put this in your little box of scraps that you can use later to make something. So all this has the adhesive on there. So now I can save that, and I'm just going to cut out these letters. Let me see. I'm going to get my other scissors. I'm a, I'm a very much beginner sewer and beginner um, fabric person. So um, I don't really, I do have a pair of fabric scissors, actually, that are in my, uh, in the other room because that's where my sewing machine is, but for right now, I'm just going to cut this M out because, and I see how I kept it in nice straight lines because I think that's going to be easier for me to stitch. That's my hope because I have not tried it yet. This is all, I'm just going along with you guys so you can see what I do, and I don't really know if I want to make this 
smaller knot. So this is, oops, didn't get the fabric. This is basically, I'm going to, I'll go off camera and I'll finish cutting all that out. But here is what we're going to end up with. So I'm just going to slide this over here. And I'm going to, I just had it on a piece of um, big watercolor paper just to hold it. But this now is my cover, right? I've cut everything out. And all you have to do, where did I put that M? Did I just, oh, here it is. See, because look, you, you just take this off, and there's your letter. So I'm going to put, and I don't know if the pink's going to be the way to go, but I think it is. All of these can get peeled off now. You can take, this is just the, um, what is it called, freezer paper. You don't need that anymore. So I'm just going to peel that off. Obviously the clouds are white fabric underneath, but wait until we do like, here's the sun. I did that in orange. And I'm going to put, like when I arrange these, oh, see, and here's the thing. If you're doing a pattern that has specific things that have to go a specific place you should kind of number them but in this case this isn't I'm not that particular I I did lay them out in the order that I cut them somewhat and then I ended up switching them around so I don't know that that's whoopsie is that yeah yeah that's really that important at the moment I'm gonna move this down so you see what I'm doing so this is all the freezer paper that I'm taking off right now there still is, on the back, is the steam -a seam on the back because I'm going to use that in a minute. I'll show you. So, first of all, I'm going to put my sun down. And see how I, I didn't even worry about the bottom. And I don't know how this is going to look on the quilt because I've never done it before because I'm overlapping. I want to see, where's my center on here? Let me make sure, am I lined up? Why does it look crooked in the camera? Okay. Um, if I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So here's the center. Right around here, number 12. So I want, I don't really want the rays to go on the fold. I mean, if they do, it's okay. So I'm going to move the cloud to the center like over actually I don't really want that cloud to be on the raise either I might I'd rather go off the edge than have it on the fold I don't know why this is my first one and we'll, I'm playing all right so I'm moving this over and anything that goes off the edge I'm just going to cut off it'll be fine but I think I'm going to go with this something like that and this this will get stitched around so I kind of like that but 12 is my center all right then dream has to fit here it has to fit from 12 to here and I only have about a quarter inch seam allowance that's all I'm gonna do I'm gonna look at the hearts the hearts are that red fabric this is kind of fun when you reveal the color that's pretty fun and I'm going to put another heart there and they're going to be dangling so when I stitch it I'm going to stitch in black and probably or I don't know what I'm going to stitch in because a lot of people when they do applique they use a similar color to the piece they're stitching on so I would use maybe an orange or a red or a yellow on that stuff you know so um, you know this being my first time I am not sure what I'm going to do but this part seems pretty easy. So this part, oops, I just peeled off the sticky part, damn it. And you know what, I don't think that really, because I can stick this down. If I know I want this, that's the whole purpose of this particular type of, um, uh, so I can just stick it where I want it. I want that kind of hanging off the edge. And then these two, I think, Maybe I don't need to have, I might overlap that and have that like that. 
small and then they're going to get bigger as they go down. I think I like this. And I have, I can add more. I, ha I was going to put stars. I thought I would add some yellow stars. That's why like yellow, wor a yellow word might be the way to go. I might end up doing a yellow word. Because the pink, I love pink for sure. But I think I might do a yellow word. I mean, this pink is so gorgeous. Um... Let me think, where's the rest of my word? So the, here's the rest of my word, and this doesn't waste anything. I can just pull this off and trace my um, word onto the yellow, but it might look better with the yellow. Oh my God, I think it will, I think it would. I love pink though. Here, here's pink. I think I'm going to go with yellow. So I am going to, let me see if I have a big enough piece of yellow. I could do it a couple different colors, but I think that would just be too much. Like if I did a yellow, orange, no, I'm going to do it all yellow. Or should I just do pink? I'm going to do a pink. Just stick with the pink and then I'll do another one and we'll see what that looks like. So I'm going to go off camera and cut all these out and then arrange everything. All right, let me cut these out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have everything cut out and I just moved it, didn't I? Damn it. All right. I'm going to, I'm, what I'm doing is just eyeballing and then um, going to, uh, let's see, two and two. Okay, so here's my center right here, number 12 again. Okay, so 12. And I think I'm going to place my dream first. And by place it, I mean I'm just going to take off the sticky back on my letters and I can stick them down and they're not permanent until I iron them so after I do this I'll take it over to the ironing board and this can be a little bit of a pain oh the other thing I was going to say is when I was cutting these letters out uh, you have to use your um, I use the uh, exacto knife so here's my 12 you kind of have to cut inside your letters very carefully. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to use, this is, I, I made this R extra long, and I'm not sure if I'm going to place it or leave it extra long is what I'm trying to say. But I might, I'm going to, I'm kind of going to make these letters a little wonky, tipped, tipped this way and that. Um, I like it, mm, I don't know, I don't know. All right. This is the first step. Don't know why I just blew. Blowing isn't good when you don't have things adhered. But this is super cool. All right, see, I knew I wanted to make my E able to go under the R. So when I actually, I think, I could probably move that over, but let's keep going. I think I'm gonna have enough room. This is awesome. That was my only thing. I didn't wanna make the letters too small so that stitching them around them would be like impossible. You know, they have to be at least, I tried anyway to make them at least a half an inch wide. Like no narrower than a half an inch. Um, and I mean, they are, they're narrower than that, but they're pretty close. So here's my A. And then the M. And I might put that up a little. Let's see. Oh, my head's probably in the way. This is fun, guys. This is like you're just almost there. All right, let's see. Do I want to put this? 
down. See, I only have a quarter inch. I got. I want to move it over. I have to move it over a tiny smidge. So I'm going to leave that, and I'll fiddle with it in a minute. But that's base. I just want to see what the basic idea is going to be. So let's take the backing off this. And set that down. I'm going to move it over a little just to be on the seat. I'm going to keep it up and over. All right. Right there. And then my cloud and this cloud, they're going to overlap. I want this cloud to be on top, I think. But you could do it that way, too. But I think that's kind of interesting, you know? I think I want this. No, I think I might do this. Oh my God, how, do, how does anyone make decisions? I can't. I can't do it. Can't make a bloody decision, as my mom would say. Now, see, here's the thing. You're going to be able to see through that a little, and that's what I... This is the whole thing about this being the first one I've done, is you guys are going to make the mistakes right along with me. Well, you're not if you don't make it yet. <laughs> don't make it until you watch the whole thing and then I'm going to go up a little higher with that one because the white is very sheer but I'm going to stitch around it I like it I think it looks good and I'm going to start placing these um, rays uh, from the right to the left and just whatever gets on it gets on it and maybe I won't put them all but we'll see how it goes so I'm gonna go off camera and do this because this is just a lot of fussy time and me getting the backing off taking hours alright so I'll be back okay so everything is pretty much stuck down and I'm liking it the only thing is I do think the yellow letters would have showed up showed showed up much better but I'm going to go with it, and I think I might stitch, like, some, um, all right, I'm filming, bib white. I'm going to just outline the letters with white, and it's going to look great, because it'll tie in with the uh, clouds. And the other thing I was going to say is, um, look how, I don't know if you can see this, oh, yeah, you can see that good on camera. The, the chevrons are going horizontally on these two clouds vertically and vertically or kind of wonky even and horizontally so that's another thing and FYI when you're designing your own applique pieces maybe you want to make them go in the right direction or you know uh, it's just a thought and it might not bother you okay that's fine okay so I was going to take I want one more cloud a piece over here kind of sticking out the edge so I just took my template this is my um, my little trace, my, well, I don't know what it's called. It's a pattern. It's my pattern. I need my Sharpie. And you don't have to be exact. I, I actually, um, but this is the matte side of the freezer paper. I have to, oh man, I'm just pulling my camera with my feet. <laughs> um, this is, okay, so this is the matte side. Let me try to stop my camera from shaking. And I'm just going to, I can see through it enough, but you can alter the shape while you're tracing it. And guess what? Each cloud will look a little different that way because we're not, you know, a machine isn't cutting these out. It's all done by hand. Now this is going to be the end that is peeking through. So I might want to make that bump a little more obvious. That's all. Because, um... I'm going to, so it's going to be like this, basically. Just sticking through right here. And you know what? You could even have put, you know what? It would have probably looked so good if I would have put these on a cloud. So in other words, if I would have put the white, um, the letters on top of white and made a cloud under there, Oh, oh, that might be what I have to do. 
I might have to do that because I think it'll just pop so much better, you know? Um, so I may think about that. I love this. This is fun. This is fun. I love my son, how that turned out, so I'm very happy with that. And yeah, I think, actually I want to put my big heart down here. I'll put the medium one over there. Um, or another medium. But yeah, what do you think? I think, and now I don't know if it would just be too much, too much white, but um, maybe if I just have a piece of a cloud and put that on top of it. All right, I'm gonna um, go get my, prepare my other cloud and put that over here and think about that and I'll be back. So now I'm just cutting the pieces that are hanging over the edge. Actually, I could use this little piece. This is a pretty big piece of a cloud. Let me see. It won't really show, but that would look really cute. See, I should just put at least a piece down there. I think I'm gonna. I wasn't going to, but I think if I just put some of the letters, I just think it needs a cloud down there. Um, and maybe put him right there. It doesn't really need it. Um, but it could look cute. I think I'm going to do it. I think I am going to put just a piece. Like, where's my tracing? Uh, oh, this. So, like, just like most of a cloud, and the dream is going to go on top of it. I'm going to do one more. And then we're going to take it to the machine, um, I'm sorry, to the ironing board, and I'm going to just iron, adhere all this down onto the fabric. And then I'm, I'm going to take it to the machine. Uh, and stitch. And here's the one thing I'm not sure about. I have to figure out if I should put batting and backing and I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to put my batting, which I have, and I'm probably just going to use muslin. Yeah, I'm going to use muslin for, uh, so here's the batting. I just cut it a little bigger than it has to be, and I'll trim it at the end. And then I'll put backing too. And then I won't quilt, because I don't have my free um, arm foot or whatever it is, my quilting foot. I have a quilting foot. It's a, called a, a darning foot. It's for applique. And I don't have that yet, because I could put swirls all in the background, and I still can. I could still do that. Um, I'll leave it. And, like, I won't bind it or anything until I get it. I have to order it. I have to figure out. I have a Janome machine. And, um, there was, it was something on Amazon that it said either a low or a high something. I can't remember what the wording was. And I didn't know. I was, I went through my manual and it says nothing about that. So I don't think the pink shows up as well, but I love it. I think it's so adorable. Oh my gosh. Um, so I am. I'm just going to put one more piece of cloud, and then we'll be over at the um, ironing board when I get back. Okay. I basically, I just ironed it onto here. I took it over to the ironing board, and my camera doesn't angle right anyway. So, But yeah, it's all adhered. So it's on there. It's all on there. And now I'm going to baste this to my batting. And I do this, um, uh, I like the way uh, Erica does it. Erica Arndt, she's the one who did the, um, the tutorials for the Quilt As You Go projects. And she recommended this 505 Spray and Fix Temporary Fabric Adhesive. 
So that's what I've been using and I really like it. And just for today, I'm going to spray this up here. Oh, and I wanted to, but I usually go in the basement and spray it. But I'm going to take these pieces because I'm going to make another one of these. And I'm going to change the fabrics up a little bit. And I may change the design, but I like these templates. I think the sun especially, I love that. And so I'm just going to save these in my little folder here that I, my stitched folder. So I'll put them in there so I know where they are for my next project. And so I've just laid this, this is basically the backing um, for my quilted, I'm gonna then stitch on top of here. But I need to, actually I need to go cut a piece of backing as well. And I'll adhere that the same way. But basically, here's how Erica does it. So you can line it up on the batting and then you fold back half of it and you just spray your adhesive and I just put paper towel underneath because it is sticky and the overspray would get sticky and you just press it down and now it's basted it's basically basted onto there and then I peel up this other side and I hope I just didn't get my whole desk covered in it but we'll see and just smooth that down and now everything will hold together when I go to stitch on my machine alright so I'm gonna do the same thing with the backing I'm gonna put a backing fabric just muslin just a white fabric cotton fabric and uh, then the next video I might do some stitching on here now um, I don't really have a camera set up for my machine and so I would have to kind of finagle it and I'm not sure how that would go um, so I may not do a stitching tutorial because just because I don't know that I have the setup for it but basically I'm gonna stitch around all these little things and that will quilt it'll quilt the it'll become quilted then and I'll, I'll come back and I'll definitely show you the finished piece alright so I'll be back all right, you guys, I stitched it, it's done, and I'm gonna make another video asking for help from all my subscribers because um, I need help. I don't know, I'm not a good sewer. Like all the paper piecing, well, it's not paper piecing, fabric piecing and all that was fine, but um, my stitching, I really need help with the stitching. I didn't even see if this fits in it yet. Let's try it seems a little snug because I got frustrated and kind of just started rushing I think and getting impatient it's a little bit snug but I think it'll there we go it just had to be straight I want to just show you once I get this in there a little snug but that's because it puckered and buckled um, the cover did because I wasn't using a quilting foot or um, a free a free arm foot or um, what would it be called an applique foot a darning foot right um, but I didn't stitch around this cloud. This is the only cloud I didn't stitch around because I really just didn't know how to go about it. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, I'm gonna try and zoom in a little so you can see the details. So going around a square thing is fine, but I didn't pull the bobbin thread up and so I don't know if these stitches are going to hold or if they're just going to come out. Um, nothing. I didn't even, like, see, look, I just pulled that thread and it totally came out. The uh, stitching came out. So I think I'm going to just go around the whole thing with um, uh, fray tack and just go around it and hopefully that will hold the stitches in. Listen, this was my first one. Like, look at this heart. I, I did it, but I totally went out of line there, and I came back in. 
I really struggled with this E. This E, something is going on with this E. Like right here, it didn't stitch. And I mean, I did it like three or four times. Most of the straight stitching though, like the M was perfectly fine. The hearts were hard. And then the clouds were, they got easier as I went. Like the back, these, I left my, um, I guess it's called a zigzag foot. So see, I'm going to have to show you guys my sewing because I don't know what feet I'm supposed to be using at what times. And um, so I still have a lot to learn when it comes to sewing. But I mean, I just, <laughs> I just did it with that foot in it and I just moved it and I didn't even down stitch or I can't even explain it. I mean, it's cute though, right? Let's go back up. It's not horrible for a first attempt. I think the clouds, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I like the white stitching on the red. On the white, you can still see it. On the pink, it looks good, but I think black stitching on the whole thing might have looked pretty good too. So it is what it is. I did it um, all by myself. I figured it out, but I still need help because I need help with the stitching part. I don't need help with any of the applique part. Like I get that, the paper piecing, creating the design I can, I can do. So I need help with stitching. So anybody who's a stitcher, a sewer, a quilter, um, whatever you want to call it, see how it bunched. Um, what, if you wouldn't mind, could you please leave me some uh, good videos of kind of beginner I don't know what it would be called because like I guess I got to get to know my machine really it's I'll look it up I'll figure it out um, or one of you guys could do a tutorial for me on uh, free motion quilting or maybe not like how do you go from one letter See, and I didn't go around the D here and around the A. I just went down one side. Like, I didn't even go down this side. But I thought about leaving it and not doing it until I figured out the stitching. But I wanted to fi finish it and have it be my first one. And just, it is what it is, you know. I mean, it still stays closed. It's still, I mean, it, it looks perfectly cute, you know. I'm just seeing if I had more, if I could go up. But anyway, all right, you guys, that's it. It's a long enough video as it is, but I struggled with the stitching because I don't know what I'm doing, and that's supposed to be the fun part. So I need to get myself a darning foot and really figure out, and I somehow they're pulling up the bobbin thread, like on top of the quilt, and I didn't do that, and so I don't know if that's important. So, all right, let me know what you guys can do to help me, and... As always, thanks for watching.